Hi friends, this is Marilyn from TarotClarity.com and today I think you're going to love this video. Today's video is comparing three decks, the focus being on the Tarot of Marseille by Jean Payen from 1743. This is a new deck I just received, uh, published by Marco Benedetti. And if you haven't already seen the video where I highlight this deck and discuss it, Go back a couple days and check it out. It's a beautiful, exceptional deck. I'm comparing it to the Payen, the Jean Payen, um, excuse me, the Jean Pierre Payen of 1713. Though, although it's uh, 30 years prior to the Jean Payen of 1743, this one is probably done by the descendant of this one. So this is the elder and this is the younger even though the Elder produced this deck 30 years later, or, uh, yeah, 30 years later. Perhaps they were a father-son uh, relationship or uncle-nephew relationship. And because I've read so much about the Payens and their relationship to the Jean Dodal deck, I thought I'd compare them to the Jean Dodal as well. Now, I have a few Dodal um, reproductions or publications, but I thought I would use the Flor Noir. Now I realize the Flor Noir is not a facsimile deck, but none of them really are. I guess the Yves Renaud deck is the closest to a facsimile that we have of these three as far as being an exact copy. But I think uh, Flor Noir, of all the reproductions of the Dodal I have, I think his was the most studied in um, keeping the idiosyncrasies of the deck while trying to bring it to a crisp resolution. Now, with the first card, oh, let me flip the camera. So with the very first card, we have the Dodal 1710. The Jean Pierre Payen, 1713. Jean Payen, 1743. So, with the very first card, we see striking similarities between all three of these. Even in, okay, in these two, we see the similarity with the truncated cat, right? The, the, something happened here when, the, when the, the way the cat was drawn, right? But even all these years later, we still see hints of it in the 1743. So we still see that, you know, it was cut off perhaps, you know, or whatever, but we still see evidence that it was there. And if we look at their faces, there's a strong simula similarity, right? So there's almost no denying. The only thing that the Fleur Noir does not have are the red dots on the uh, on the hat, on the hat of the uh, jester, or the fool rather. Now the similarities between these three are more striking than, for example, the similarities by uh, between the Piacentini and the Soprafino decks, which I highlighted a, a, a week or two ago, you can tell that these, you know, that the um, Della Roca, the Soprafino um, deck, was probably more or less the model for the Piacentini, or or, or at least referenced. Now the Soprafino is 1835, and the Piacentini. It was like 40 years later, 1875. So you see that this was this was the incentive or the or the inspiration for this deck. So it's kind of based on this deck, right? But you can tell it's not by the same hand. There's a different level of craftsmanship, right? But with these cards, with these images. With these cards, it, it's 
man, they, they're either the same plates or the same hand. And you can just see it from the first card. I mean, look at their faces. There's a great similarity. Now, the center Payan, I guess is the most, well, this Doda Payan, uh, this Doda face is kind of goofy too, kind of droopy. I think of the three faces, the 1743 Payan faces, is the more elegant face. Now we notice, this is interesting, that the Dodal female pope is called La Ponce. La Ponce. And uh, whereas the Tupayen or La Papes. Let's take a look. You know, I forgot to comment on the Fool card, what it was called. El, Le Fool. Okay, Le Fool here. Okay, all three of them then are Le Fool. So this is very interesting. Now, could it be um, because the Do Dal, um, which I'll get to when we get to the, like the Two of Coins and the Chariot card, it, it, it there's no like there's no date on this. Although I think conclusively um, it's been dated to 1701. But you know, one of the one of the reasons, perhaps, for the difference in the in the wording, might be because the Dodal, as we'll see on numerous cards as we progress, was made for export, and I think the Two of Coins. Let's jump to it right away. Um, it says uh, Dodali, which makes it sound as though they're trying to attract or appeal to an Italian audience. So the Tarot of Marseille style, although this is not from, I think this is, uh, where is this from? Lyon? Um, yeah, Lyon. Um, is, is reintroducing Tarot, so it seems, back to the Italians in, with a new flavor. Anyway, now look at the, look at that bird on the shield. It's the same bird, right? It's definitely the same bird. Now the hands are different. Now here, what's going on? There's no hand. But in the 17, 13, and 43, we have a hand. Now remember, you know, Flournois did redo this, re revisit, so, but it's not likely that he would have missed a hand. But this thing here looks like, at least when it was created originally, might have been a hand, but maybe, maybe it was not prop, you know, not exactly rendered. And we have the mark. Um, Flournois maintains that this is the mark of Murma or Murme or Murma who was a master engraver. And so it appears on all four of these decks. And so there's a clue there that it's done by the same hand or the same house. And again, we have the same bird.
Isn't this interesting? Like what is on top? We have the staff of the Pope. But what's going on up there? So with the blindfolded Cupid on all three, even though the 1743 is closer in time to the Conver than to the Noble or the Doda, which are TDM1, it still appears to be a TDM1 style. And we'll see it again in the canopy of the of the, sh of the charioteer, or the chariot, excuse me. I mean, look at the horses. They have the same expression. Hmm. And the same confusion in the arm back or the chair back or the wings, whichever this is uh, depicting, of justice, right? Um, it's not as colorful as it is in the two pie ends, but we still see, we still see the same markings. And the Payen face of 1743, I think is thus far the most elegant, has the most elegant faces. We see, interesting, we see J substituted with an I and the V uh, substituting the, the U for justice. We see that in the 1710 and the 1713, but when we get to 1743, we have La in front, but we still have the I and the V. So I think it's just about impossible to disregard the fact that not only were they modeled or, 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 you know, in the same tradition as the Doda, but by the same hands, you know, with very little exception. I mentioned when I was doing the um, video on the 1743 that that looked like a monocle almost on the eye of the hermit. But here in the 1713, it looks like it's an extension of line from the, the clothing of the uh, arm, right? You see the lines extending. So... Perhaps a mistake in rendering, you know, the lines were accidentally drawn, <clears throat> you know, and then it came to the face of the uh, hermit. And then here, if they were the same plates, perhaps the groove was deep and then the ink just, you know, made it now look like a, a monocle. But it, for whatever reason, um, either it wasn't, on the Dodal or Flor Noir did not choose to draw those lines, those extend those lines, I don't know, because it's not a facsimile. And the name, Lermite, Lermite, is the same on all three.
and we have, I think this is the first card in the Dodal, where we see it's for, you know, I'm not exactly sure the exact translation, but the idea is that it's for foreigners or it's for, you know, export. Mm. I'm just really struck by the beauty of the um, Marco Benedetti deck. Really exceptional. I mean, I oohed and odd over that over that deck in the video I did for it, um, and I know I'm doing this kind of out of sequence, but I want to sh I want to show you. The card stock. Okay, so here we have. Can you hear that? It's, it, it sounds mellow, doesn't it? Right? Flexible. Here we have quality paper by Yves Renaud. But it's it's nowhere near as flexible. And the Fleur Noir, again, quality paper. A little bit more flexible than the Renault, but not bad. But this one, look at the bend. And if you look at that profile. So if you're a collector, it may not matter to you, you know, how easy they are to shuffle. If you are a reader, that may be another point of consideration. Now I realize they're, they're all three different decks, you know, they're not the same deck, of course. So it's not a matter of only owning one, you know, because they're all different, but they're so similar, aren't they? And they all have the eight you know, the reversed 12 and the fingers and the tongue. Look at the lines on the Fleur Noir. Now on the noble, it's identified as death on the bottom. But by the time of the Dodal, it seems as though the tradition was done away with, or it just didn't happen on this deck and either of none of these three decks. You know, I've wondered if the yellow over the black um, in some decks that where we see the death card or the ground on some of the other cards, if it was meant to try to make green, because you don't really see green in the older um, French decks, right? So I wonder if that was an effort to make green so that it, it was supposed to be green grass rather than black. But again, an uncanny similarity between these three, right? I mean, it's it's crazy how similar they are. They look so much alike. The faces in the corners. Well, they're not exactly the same. These two are more similar than this one. But again, it could have something to do with Flournois's hand. It is not a facsimile. And the choices that each one of these deck makers, these publishers make, right? I mean, two of the three decided to represent the ground as black, where this one, um, Renaud, you know, chose to make it perhaps as similar to the original as, as he could, um, which had a layer of yellow over the black. 
but consequently, consequently, it was over the faces, it was over everything, but although not over the red, because it would have become orange, which is interesting. And it did not become orange. Now, in the bodice of temperance, we do not see, you know, we do not have the breasts on the outside of the garment in either of the pie ends, but look at the loopy loop of the skirt is the same, right? The foot is the same. Um, the 1710 and 13 have the same name, whereas by the time of the 1743, they have law in front of it. Um, the mouth is different. The faces are, again, in the 43 Payan, the face is a bit more elegant. But we see the same markings in the wings, right? I mean... It's like the same plate created the wings. You know, um, wear and tear of the matrix might have, you know, resulted in the face looking a little different. Although there's, um, we have to keep in mind that there might have been liberties taken by each one of these publishers regarding the faces, especially if maybe, you know, part was damaged and they just completed the face. I'm not saying that that's what happened in, in these particular cases, but we have to keep those things in mind. If I sound like I'm totally in love with the 1743 Payen by uh, Marco Benedetti, it's because I am. <laughs> Well, we have some variation here with the garment of the devil, but we still see the face and the belly, the tongue sticking out, the twigs and the hair, these things, I guess flames and the torch. Similarity in the faces of the acolytes. the period at the end of the devil, right? The flame emanating from the tower rather than from the sky. Although here, well, it's, you know, <clears throat> I think there is some ambiguity here that is not present in the noble. The noble, it's ambiguous, but it's, it, it, it's not ambiguous in the noble. It's very clear in the noble. But I think there's some room for ambiguity. I know people will disagree with me, but um, I, I, I think there's room for ambiguity in this tower by the Dodal and these other decks. So I'm looking at the broken line of his head, which does not appear in either of the Payans. <clears throat> For those of you who are sticking with me till the end, um, I know you're the diehards, right? You want to see every card. I look at the goofy face. <laughs> but look at the breasts, right? Those breasts are peculiar, the, the, the way they're drawn. And it's peculiar in all three. So there's no question that, you know, there's no question, you know, that they either came from the same plate or they shared a great commonality. And plus we see the bird in all three in the bush. And 
that peculiar little tree or whatever that is. Hairstyles the same on the top. Ah, and look at this. Look in the moon. We have the IP or the JP of Jean Paul, uh, Jean Payen, right? Jean Payen. So is this, it's not Jean-Pierre Payen, it's Jean Payen. So are these two, are these two the ones? So is Jean Payen Dodal? And was the name Dodal or Dodali created, you know, just as a Italian product for export? And these suns are very elegant. Oh my gosh. You know, there's some clumsiness in the figures and the wall and, you know, there's a lack of elegance, I think. I, I'll be argued with, please don't send me hate mail. <laughs> but I don't care. You know, there's a lack of el elegance in, in these figures, right? But look at the elegance of the sun. Look at that. All three of these suns are just so beautiful. And they are dissimilar. These two are more similar than this third one. This guy, they kind of look like Neanderthals or something. Maybe the, maybe this block or this, um, I don't know what they call it. The word escapes me, but the template, you know, the, the matrix for these are all different, perhaps. Maybe it had to be replaced and they copied it, you know, or they did it their way, which would be the same kind of formula, but, it, you know, maybe that's why they're different. And look at the wreath, the wreath or the plant foliage around the waist is so strikingly similar. How do, how is it not either done by the same hand or using the same plates? I don't know. As are the faces. Let's look at the feet. I don't know what liberties each of the publishers took in refining some of the areas. And we're moving right along to the pips. Okay, so the thumbs are a little different. So the hands are a little different. And I do believe there are two extent um, Dodal decks and one of, and the aces, I think, I think it's the aces of swords and batons and then the page of something. Um, had been redone by maybe the same house or the same person, but they were redone because they, they, the templates were damaged. So that might explain why they're not exactly the same. 
similar but different. Now here we see that Flournois chose to bring restoration to, you know, like the swords, you know, deep, you know, deep colors, you know, deep black, right? Deep red. I'm not going to go through. And of course the six, I think of the Dodal. I think it, I think, I'm not sure if, if, if it was this, of this, which cards of the Dodal might not have been original, although it might have been, um, it might have been the Noble that I'm thinking of. So let's let's see. So we see uh, Eve's, you know, chose not to make them, you know, deep black, so that if it was intended to be black, right? Um, Eve's Renault, you know, decided not to make them deeply black. Let's see the six of. Let's look at the Six of Swords. Let's see if we have the same flower. No, they have a different flower. And then let's look at the Six of Swords here. Okay, the flowers of these two are more similar than what we have here. And although this looks like four, if you count the hilts, we see three and three is six. So. Let me uh, skip a few. Okay, I thought I'd skip to the tens just to see. Okay, so we have the interlacing in both of the payens, whereas Fleur Noir, um, oh no, we don't have the red here. So we only have it in the center. So I don't know if this is because, you know, Yves Renault decided to put that in there or if it actually was in there, right? Because each publisher, you know, maybe makes tweaks. Ah, okay, I was holding it upside down, that's why. Oh no, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong one. No, the center one is the only one. With the red. Look at this, oh my gosh. Again, the Yves Renaud has the yellow paint over the black, or the yellow ink over the black ink. So, you know, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if that was um, Renaud's, um, you know, keeping it that way, was because that's the way the original was, you know, and I wonder if they were trying to make it green. And we see similar markings here. A detail that carried through, you know, maybe it changed a little bit or, you know, but still pretty similar. The nostrils of each of the horses is a little different. Um, hmm. 
you know, I, I missed something with the chariot. The chariot typically will have, yeah, will have initials and it's missing here. Whereas I think there's a JP or an IP on the, no, it's missing here too. Interesting. Interesting. And here it's just negative space. Wow. I'm glad I thought to go back. Wow. So in the place where the placard ought to be with the initials, it's missing. So that's very interesting. That's kind of a telltale, right? Each one shows the, the word queen is written differently, spelt differently. And here, swords is spelt differently too. Floral motif on the seat of the king is very similar. And the posture of the of the legs and the feet and these two are uh, just about identical. Here it's a little different. You don't see his leg here. Hmm. And on the two pie ends, we don't have the little bird of the dodal. In the base of the chalice. So in the two cups, we have Jean Dodal. Here we have JP Payen or IN. Oh, the P is over here. Okay. JP IER hmm. -E I guess maybe that P carries over to the Payen over here. And then here we have JP Payen. Oh, Jean, excuse me, Jean Payen. Avignon. So we have some differences here. There's no two Roman numeral on the dodal. So I'll skip, I'll skip a few. So I just randomly skipped to the eight of cups. So between the noble, the dodal, and the two payens, none of them were created in Marseille. And if you read what Florinois has written about cards produced in Marseille, um, he, he's of the opinion that the cards that are actually made in Marseille are inferior to the ones that came out of Lyon and Avignon and Paris. So that's interesting. Trying to show these. Here's my boyfriend. For those of you who hang out with me, you know what I mean. This guy's my boyfriend. I call him my boyfriend. But he's, he's not my boyfriend unless he has a wreath in his hair, a hat in his hand, and his tunic over 
the chalice or the cup. Now I don't know if if the valet if the valet of uh, cups was the one that was a, from a different template of the dodal. I'm not sure. Let me check my notes. No, it was the valet of batons um, that had an alternate dodal. <clears throat> so it was the aces of swords and batons, and then the valet of baton batons. So we'll see that when we get to the batons. And I think I failed to mention this in the noble, but we still see this hat or sack or whatever that is on the back of the uh, knight, which seems to be present here as well in all three of these. And it's also one that I believe it was on the noble. So the nostrils of the horses are the same in the two payans. They're a little different here. Again, we see the yellow ink over the black. Now in the dodal, this is interesting, which comes first, this looks more like a window. And I had mentioned yesterday that in this one, maybe further, you know, later decks saw this scroll of the canopy of the queen and thought it was a window. But here in the dodal, it looks like a window <laughs> more than it does here. So perhaps, Perhaps these two knew it was a wind, you know, perhaps these two did know it was a scroll that came over, you know, um, you know, the, the extension of the throne with like a canopy, you know, hanging over for the queen. Maybe they knew what it was and don't, and, but, but it just seems anti, you know, uh, uh, it seems um, anti-intuitive to say that. But doesn't it look more like a window here than the knees to? So who misunderstood what? Or maybe they didn't misunderstand it. None of us were there. I guess we'll never know. Again, difference in spelling queen between the Payan and the Dodals. So the Ace of Batons is the other card um, of the Dodal that the two versions that exist had different Aces of Swords, Batons, and the Knight, excuse me, and the um, Ballot of Batons, so we'll see. But these, these two are very similar to one another, and they're still somewhat similar to this one, but there are some differences. Okay, let's skip to the valet. Okay, again we have four export or four foreigners or whatever. He's not named on this one but he is named on the two Payans. So the hat is different on the Dodal. Do 
Now, look at all. There's still confusion between the three about what is going on with that horse. Right? Like, what's going on? Wow, she's beautiful. Look at the comparison of the faces. The 1753 Payan, uh, 1743 Payan, Payan is just stunning. She has this, they have the same folding of the uh, fabric, very similar. So let's take a look at the two of coins of the Dodal. Again, as I mentioned, it, it says Dodali as though it, it, you know, Jean Dodali, you know, created or fabricated in Lyon by Jean Dodali. So could Dodali be, you know, could Dodali just be the product for, you know, export to Italy, trying to appeal to the Italian masses, but done by the same people? Here we have 1713 by Jean-Pierre. Here we have Jean Payen rather than uh, Jean-Pierre and 1743. And I'll just, this is the last suit, so I'll just go so. Okay, the valet. Queen or Denier. So when I do these videos comparing, I'm not always sure what everyone wants to me to comment on. And sometimes I miss things. Again, we have the yellow over the black. I wonder if they were trying to make green. It just makes me think that every time I see it. So I don't really know, um, you know, and, and sometimes I miss commenting on things, you know, after I do the video, I say, oh, I should have mentioned this or that or this other. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, comparing these three significant and, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the, the significant in the sense of linking them together and, and seeing a uh, a link between the three of them, right? One is 1710 or 1701, I think. Um, I'm sorry, my memory is shot. 1701, the latter is 1743. They're all TDM1. But then, of course, um, you know, I, I, I think between them, there could have been TDM2. So it's not necessarily TDM1, TDM2 necessarily showing um, a time progression, but perhaps an indication of who was creating it or what hand was doing, you know, was, was responsible for it. Anyway, um, until next time, friends, peace and stay well.